Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. If you're stopping by the channel for the first time, please consider subscribing to my channel. And while you're at it, smash that like button for me. I really would appreciate it. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about credit card arbitrage. How to use other people's money to make money. And in this case, it's the credit card company's money. Why would you do this? Well, if you're someone who wants to make more money but you don't currently have a lot of cash, but you have decent credit and you have some credit limits within your credit cards, then this is a great opportunity for you to be able to use the credit card's money to make cash. If you're somebody like me who does have cash, but I don't want to disrupt my cash while it's in its investments making money for me, then I will lean on my credit cards as a financial tool to make money while my money or my cash continues to make money. There are many reasons why people would do credit card arbitrage, but those are two of the reasons. I'm gonna take you through two options today that I've used that has allowed me to leverage credit cards and make money. Option one is a short-term option. And there are three things you need to know in order to effectively do option one. The first is your start date. The second is your end date. And then third is your due date all of these things can be found on your credit card statement, whether that statement is mailed to you physically or go online and pull up your credit card statement and all three pieces of information here should be on there. Those three things are important because when you're using your credit card to purchase things that you're gonna then turn around and resell for profit, you want to make sure you can maximize the days you can use that credit card without having to pay the credit card company any interest or fees. So let me give you an example. If my start date for my credit card statement is the fifth of each month, my end date is the following fourth of the next month and then my due date is the first. So how do I use those three dates to maximize the time I can use that credit card without paying interest? Let's say January 5th is my start date and February 4th is my end date of my statement. With those two pieces of information, I'll know exactly when I should be making purchases with my credit card. I should be making, making purchases on the 5th, the very first day of my start of my new statement cycle. I should be making my purchases on that day. And the reason I want to make them on that day is because I want to get 30 days worth of float. So if I take January 5th as my start date, and my end date is February 4th. If you do, if you count up those days, that's 30 days of float. And 30 days of float only means you are allowed to make purchases within those 30 days without having to pay the credit card company any interest. That's what float is. You need to start purchasing your products, or services that you'll be selling to make profit. You need to be on those purchases the very first day of your statement cycle. So from January 5th to February 4th represents 30 days. The end date, like I said, is February 4th. The due date is gonna be roughly 26 days from the end date. So in this case, that would be March 1st. February 4th, and then you look at the calendar and you take it around to March 1st, now you get 26 days of a grace period. When your statement uh, cycle is over, your credit card company basically stops your charges on that date. 
which for me would be February 4th. And then they're gonna send you a statement and say, okay, Richard, for the last 30 days, here are all your purchases. You owe us in full on March 1st. If you don't pay us in full on March 1st, then you're going to have interest forced against you because you didn't pay your balance in full. We're going to charge you interest. So from February 4th to March 1st, you got 26 days worth of grace period. Now, if you add your 30 days, which was from January 5th to February 4th, that's your 30 days of float. And then if you take your February 4th to March 1st, that's 26 days. Now you have 56 days of float plus grace period to be able to use your credit card, buy the things you need that you're gonna turn around and resell for profit and not have to pay any interest for 56 days. I have used that technique to buy luxury watches. I would buy my watches on the fifth of the month. I would take my float period from the fifth to the fourth of the next month. And then once they sent me my bill, I knew I had from the fourth to, to the first of the following month in order to make the payment. So I had the 56 days and I would buy my watches on the fifth and I would sell through them before my 56 days. And then I would simply turn around and pay my balance in full before the first of that following month and then I would just take my profits and set them to the side and I had none of my money actually in the deal. That's how you would use option one. Option two is a long-term option and the way this works is inside of your credit card there are certain offers. Uh, one of those offers that are real common is balance transfers. So the credit card company says, hey Richard, if you transfer your balances from another card onto our card, we'll give you zero interest for, you know, let's say 15 months on those balances that you transfer. That's one option that's very common. Most of you guys have probably heard of that one. But the option that I'm going to be talking about today is what I call a direct deposit offer. Now, with a direct deposit offer, the credit card company is simply stating if you got a $50,000 credit limit, you can take that $50,000 credit limit and transfer it to or move it to your checking account. We won't charge you any interest for 12, 15, or 18 months. Now we will charge you a transaction fee, which is typically between two and 4%. And in my case, on my credit cards, it's normally 4%. So if I got the $50,000 credit limit, they charge me 4% for the direct deposit transfer. So 50,000, take 4% of that, that's $2,000. Now I don't take the $2,000 in my pocket to pay them for that transaction fee. It comes out of my credit limit. Instead of me getting $50,000 transferred to my checking account, I get 48. The credit card company uses the other two for my 4% transaction fee. And then I get no interest on that $48,000 that's in my checking account for 12, 15, or 18 months. It, it's, made, it's different for each credit card, but for my particular credit card that I use, which is my Bank of America Cash Rewards signature card, it's 18 months. So I take the $48,000 and now I can invest that $48,000 in whatever I want to invest it in in order to turn it over to create money for myself. The way I use mine is through luxury watches again. Well, I buy luxury watches at a discount. I then resell those watches online for a profit. And I continue to just turn that inventory for 18 months. And my goal is to double my money. So if I took 48,000 from the credit card limit to my checking account over the next 18 months, the goal is to create $96,000. So then at the end of the 18 months, I would take 48,000, pay the credit card back, and then have made 48,000 for myself. And again, using the credit card company's money, not my money because my money is still being invested and I'm not using my money. So that is the way I use option two. Like I said, a longer term option, because it's a direct deposit basically of your credit limit. And I've used that for, to, for down payments on real estate. 
I've used it to make investments in the stock market in in companies that I'm familiar with and that I have have some comfort level with and, and I've made money and I've used it for luxury watch sales like I said so those are the three ways I've used option two and really the only way I use option one is for luxury watch sales or some type of product or service that I can turn pretty quickly within that 56 day window that I have before I have to make my payment and pay the balance in full. Now guys, this is not for everybody. So please, I, I, I don't, don't, don't think I'm trying to pitch this to, to, to any and everybody. You really have to have good credit card management and you really need to understand what you're gonna be using the money for and if you can actually make money off that product or services that you're gonna be buying, either in option one or option two, right? You, you gotta make sure there's a plan in place in order to make money if you're gonna be taking these balances or using the credit card from a, 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 as an arbitrage technique, right? You need to make sure you know that if you don't, don't do it, right? Because you don't wanna be stuck with something that you've purchased with your credit card and you can't resell it and make any money, then you're just stuck, right? So be careful with that. It's not for everybody, but people who understand credit card management, you want another financial tool to build your wealth, this is a perfect way to do it. Guys, I have a special offer for you guys from Webull. Webull is offering four free stocks value up to $3,700 when you open a Webull brokerage account and you make a $100 deposit to your brokerage account. Again, that's four free stocks valued up to $3,700. There's a link in the description box of the video. If you're interested in that offer, please click on the link, sign up, deposit your 100 bucks, and get your four free stocks with Webull. If you're stopping by the channel for the first time, please consider subscribing to my channel share the video, and smash that like button. I really would appreciate it. Thoughts become things. If you can see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hands. You guys keep chasing your greatness. Never stop believing in yourself. And I'm gonna catch you on the next video. Peace. Today's video is sponsored by my company, RF Financial Consulting. And in my company, I work with individuals just like you through financial mentoring and coaching sessions. And in those one hour sessions, we talk about strategies to help you get to your financial freedom, whether it be through real estate investing, stock market investing, creating additional streams of income, credit card arbitrage, or starting and growing a business. If that's something that you might be interested in, there's an email address in the description box of the video. Send me an email and let's discuss if I'm the right fit for you.